Poppin' Rams, and welcome to the last CTV cook show before spring break. The show today is packed with good laughs, fun recipes, and of course, tasty treats. Now, time's a ticking, so we better just jump right into it. This month, Hattie and I chose a recipe that's a little different from our typical topper flop dish. That's right, if you think back to our last show, we picked escargot, otherwise known as snails. And I think it's safe to say that was a total flop. I mean, I couldn't get that awful taste out of my mouth for about a week. <laughs> I definitely feel that. <laughs> and because of this, we decided to take a little bit more of a safe route this week. So let's check it out right here on Topper Flop. <laughs> Top or flop, today we are making croquembouche. I am so excited for this one because it's a little bit sweeter. We've been doing some stuff with not so great recipes recently, so I'm really excited to try this because you really can't go wrong with sugar. All right, guys, so we've got to start over here on our stove top, so if you want to follow us. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to start with is our pastry cream. One cup of whole milk. Once we've got the milk in there, we can turn this up to medium to high heat. While we're waiting for the milk to heat up, we are going to mix the egg, the egg yolk, and the sugar together until it becomes nice and pale and it thickens a little bit. You want to see some mad whisking skills? Yeah, I need to work out more. <laughs> That's a lie. I made that up. I'm not, I'm not good at whisking. I mean, it, I mean it's yeah. looking better. Yeah. I see, I would keep whisking it though. Now we're going to be adding in two tablespoons of cornstarch and two tablespoons of flour. Awesome. So then from here we just mix it up, right? Yeah, we just cool. whisk away. I assume just until it's incorporated. Once it's combined, then we yeah. can add our next ingredient. Ooh, would you look at that? That's looking nice. Ooh. Mm, oh my god. Alright, so now that we've got our mixture all done, we're gonna go grab our milk off of the stove and we're gonna start with a fourth a cup because if you pour it all in too fast, it'll actually curdle the eggs. <laughs> Hurry, I don't know how to do this. And then from there, we're gonna slowly add the rest of the milk. I have just whisked very vigorously. So now we're going to pour this mixture back into our saucepan, put it back on the stove, and then at a medium low heat, we are going to stir it for five to seven minutes until it thickens up and gives us kind of like a pudding consistency. Oh yeah. We just pulled our cream mixture off of the stove and now we're gonna add a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. We're going to whisk the mixture just to combine that vanilla in. Now we're going to take a piece of um, plastic wrap and just lay it over the top of the custard. Um, we just want to make sure that the, the plastic is touching all of the custard so that it prevents a film from forming. And now we're going to put it in the fridge while we do the rest of our, our pastry stuff. Mm -hmm. Next, we need to preheat the oven to 425 degrees, and then we're gonna line our baking sheet here with some parchment paper. While we're waiting for our custard to cool, we are going to start working on our pastries. We are going to combine water and butter, butter, sugar, salt, and then heat it up on the stove over medium heat. Once our butter is completely melted, we're gonna bring it back over, add in our flour, and then put it back on the stove. Um, and this is just to get it into that doughy texture. And after that, we're gonna add some eggs and we'll be set. Do you want me to show you my one-handed egg cracking trick? I would love to see that. We'll see if we can do it. Okay, ready? There you go, and then just kind of put pressure. Oh, look at that, no shells, no shells, who is she? Okay, so now we wanna really mix them in before we add the second egg. All right, here we go, number two. Oh, there we go. Oh, would you look at that? Number two. Now we're going to put our dough into our little pastry bag and we're going to puff them out into little cream puffs. Yeah, I feel like this is too liquidy. Oh. Oh no. Oh. Oh no. Oh. Wait. Ah. Don't do me. Don't do me. So we just had to go back and we just added more flour. So we'll see how that turns out, I guess, when we're done because it was not thick pasty enough, but I'm feeling that this is looking better. All right, ready? Yes. Go! Bigger than that. 
No, -uh, it said one inch mounts because they're gonna gonna go yeah. higher. I wonder how important the wooden spoon actually is. Yeah. I have a wooden. All right. Round three. Yeah. Mm. You're holding your shape a bit better. Cooking's hard, Krista. Baking is hard. Baking is really hard. Now that we kind of have some <laughs> pastries, we're gonna put them in the oven for 10 minutes at 425 degrees. onto plates. Um, you can use a wire cooling rack, but we don't have one. Um, so we're just gonna put them on these plates and then we're going to fill them with our custard. I'm oh. noticing, why is it hollow? <laughs> it has a little bit of a, a like the bottom, bowl. but this is not, not what we were going for. I just kind of wanted to make one recipe that actually worked. Let's get our, our cream from the fridge and then we're gonna fill these bad boys <laughs> and see i mean we'll try to fill them we'll yeah. try to fill them well you know we'll get creative with yeah. it all right let's put the cream into our what is this called piping bag piping bag and then we'll attempt to fill our hollow cream puffs <laughs> here we go do we want right. to just fill the bottom or do we want to try to fill it into one let's try filling the bottom for this one Mmm. That looks cute. Okay. So I think what you're supposed to do is just stick it in. Oh, no. Did it go all the way through? Yeah. Okay, now well. it's good. You're supposed to, I think I, I don't know how much cream I put in there. Okay. Hattie and I have just filled our cream puffs with the custard, and the next thing that we're going to do, the last actual, like, active cooking part that we're doing is to make the caramel that we're gonna drizzle on top. We have to put one and a fourth cup of sugar and a third of a cup of water into a saucepan. And we're gonna go and boil that until it turns into a caramel. So now what we're gonna do is start to form our croquembouche tower. So we're just going to take all of our puff pastries, dip them into the, the caramel, and then stick them on a plate and just build our tower. Um, Oh my god, it hardens so quickly. Ah. Ow. Oh, no. It's hot. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You just gotta just go put it in that way. It's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Here is our lovely croquembouche. So we're gonna try it now. We're gonna taste it. Um, yeah, are you ready? I'm <laughs> very ready. I'm just gonna. I wanna get some I of that. Wanna, yeah, I want some of the caramel. Well, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna eat it upside down. A caramel stabbed the back of my throat! <laughs> Not what do you mean I wouldn't put it in? <laughs> you know, they're tasty. They really are. They are good. They yeah. are good. I, it, I don't think we really made croquembouche. No. We, we made a Hattie and Krista version of croquembouche. Well, this is certainly going to be an interesting one to see what Hattie and Krista in the studio think we <laughs> topped or flopped, but we'll send it to you yeah. guys. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, Krista and Hattie. <laughs> in my opinion, you know, the cream puffs, they did taste really good. Um, they didn't look good. They really <laughs> did it. Um, I was really expecting you know, that beautiful tower mm -hmm. with like the caramel drizzling down and it did not end up that way. It really didn't. Yeah, honestly, you would think that after all of my experience with sugar that like maybe at some point I would figure out how to do it correctly, but apparently that hasn't been the case. And I agree with you. I think that they were, they were really good, very tasty. Um, but because we didn't actually make croquembouche, like we didn't make the, the beautiful tower, you, you kind of look at the plate and you're like, <laughs> what were they doing? Um, so it's like pancakes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think in that case, I would say flop. 
I'm going to say top. Really? I think compared to the other ones we did, this one tasted good. And I feel like with food, if it tastes good, like, yeah, you want it to look good, but it tasted good. So I'm going to say top for this here's, one. Here's the other thing, though. If you saw the plate of what we had, I don't think you could tell what it is. So for me, I'm going to say, I'm going to say flop, but taste wise top, um, but agree to disagree, I guess. That's totally fine. <laughs> well, coming up next, we've got a fun Easter tradition that you just might want to try. It's, it's going to be awesome. So stick around to see what Hattie and I are going to do with all of this. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. Welcome back, Rams. As promised, we're going to show you an old Easter tradition that dates back to the 1200s. This craft is something that anyone can do at home over this Easter weekend and hopefully have some fun while they're at it. We're making cascarones, also known as confetti eggs. For those that don't know about these, they're basically hollowed out eggshells that you decorate Fill with confetti and then you break over people's heads for good luck on Easter. <laughs> well, I think we better get cracking on these. So, Hattie, what is the first step? All right. So, first, we're going to put on gloves because we are dying eggs and we're dealing with eggs in general. And I don't know about you, but <laughs> Gotta stay I don't want to get dye all over my hands. So, we've got agree. these ridiculously large gloves. <laughs> um, so, the thing with cascarones is, is you want the shell to be whole, so you don't want to like completely break the egg apart. So I'm gonna give you an egg. Thank you. Um, the trick that I learned is you take like the pointier side and you just tap it okay. and kind of make like an indent. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mine is starting to crack yes. down the side. I know, I know. You gotta be careful. Okay. So you kind of get like this indent, and then you can peel off the top oh. <laughs> shell layers uh -huh. a little bit. And just like, okay. Oh, okay. It's, it's yeah. coming out. And then you make a little hole and you just get the <laughs> egg out of there. Sometimes it's hard to get the yolk out. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we're making progress. I don't think I made the hole big enough. Yeah. It's got to be kind of, kind of big, like big enough that you could put confetti in it later, you know? I'm so scared. I'm about to either break <gasps> or drop this. Oh, you're dropping <laughs> eggs so everywhere. Sorry. Okay. Well, mine is emptied for the most part. Awesome. So we can do one more. Awesome. See how this one See, they're hard to grab. It's also just because uh, we have the yolk on our on our gloves there now. We go. All right. Okay. Let's get that. There we go. Ooh. Got a little egg on the <laughs> desk. <laughs> All right. Let's go with this. All right. Get that you can have a, a nice there. scrambled egg breakfast after this. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I keep <laughs> spraying egg everywhere. Just be be <laughs> gentle. Oh. I have to just get it out. It's kind of gross. Ooh, ooh, it made a nice fun sound. Ooh, there we all go. All right, cool. Two eggs empty. Now what? All right, so um, usually if you had a kitchen sink, you'd mm -hmm. rinse these off because okay. you will be putting them in on people's heads, but we're just going to not do that. Sounds good. So I'm going to move the eggs over here, um, and then we've got egg dye. So this is basically just dye that you would do with Easter eggs. Awesome. Um, if you want to grab that little tool, we've got like, you could really use like a paper clip or anything. This just came with the egg dyeing kit, awesome. so we're going to use it. Um, and you want to just drop the eggs in there. I like to kind of like try to sink them a little bit just so you get that even color all over the egg 
But I'm you can just really using do the tool anyway. So. Oh, I might have gotten a lot of dye inside of the egg. No, that's okay. That has definitely happened. No, that's okay because honestly, you just dump it out when you're done. Should I put it back in here now? No, 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 no. You gotta let oh, them you sit. Let, oh, okay. Yeah, these babies sit for like five minutes. Oh, awesome. So we'll let those sit. And since they take so long, I took the liberty of doing a couple last night awesome. so that they're already done. Um, so we can go ahead and move these right over here. Perfect. All right. So here are the ones that are done. So as you can see, they're really like dark colored and they've got the little hole and now we can just fill them. Awesome. I think I'm going to go with some, ooh, we'll do, we'll do a, a similar colored egg with the confetti. So we're going to do red and red. Ooh, no, we're going to rainbow it a little bit. I like gonna it. put all of them in. I know. I've got, I've got some pink. <laughs> and you can really um, fill them up as much as you want. I that There's sounds, no, ooh, yeah. actually, no. If I'm going to be cracking this on your head, then it really needs to, it really oh, needs to be it filled. On, bring it on. <laughs> all right. So we've got our egg filled. Um, now we got to seal them up with some tissue paper. Oh, so if you want to grab that glue. Yes. Awesome. Takes me back to my elementary days. I know, right? I haven't used like Elmer's glue right? in forever. <laughs> All right. So then we just make a little circle yeah, around, the around the top of the, the egg. Do you want me to glue you up or would you like to? I would like to do the honors. Go for I it. I really would. Perfect. And then we're going to, ooh, should I go the same color or should I do blue this time? Whatever you think. All right, we're going blue. I'm going, I'm going to go red. That seems right. Awesome. Oh, you're just doing a little Christmas thing. Howdy, it's Easter. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. No, it's just got, just got the holidays late. a little a little mixed up. All right. So um, once you've got the tissue glued on over, you let the glue dry. But <laughs> I'm just way too excited. I think I'm just ready to crack this on I'm your a head. little scared. You know, the, the cool thing about these, something interesting, before you get glitter in my hair. Okay. Um, these were actually like from Asia, and then they went over from Asia to Italy, um, and then they moved to Spain, and then they ended up in Mexico. Hmm. And in the olden days, they used to put powdered perfume in here, but somehow it got switched to confetti. So, well, I'm not complaining. I'd rather right have now. confetti in my hair than perfume. Okay, oh, yeah. we ready? Are you ready? I'm just gonna. Yeah, ready? <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I oh like it. I like it. <laughs> Perfect. Oh my gosh. <laughs> all right. Well, with all this confetti in our hair, I think we're going to have to take a quick break. <laughs> but don't go anywhere yet because when we come back, I'll be going over the latest experimental eats. Stay tuned. Awkward. Do I look familiar? I should. You might remember me from here. Here. We we remember. Or maybe even here. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. It can actually be a perfect moment to reach out to a friend and ask if they're okay if they seem down. It doesn't matter how you say it. You all right? Everything's okay. Oh, gee. You all right, girl? Oh, you cool? You bug and dog. Just show you're there for them. Go on, Kelly. See the awkward. Hey, um, you haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Now, I'm sure I still have sparkles in my hair, so don't judge, but welcome back, Rams, and welcome to Experimental Eats. I personally have always been a fan of tapioca pudding. My mom used to make it for me when I was little, and I always loved those little pearls of deliciousness. But, you know, that was a long time ago, so I decided to hop back on the tapioca train to try making a more modern and grown-up version of these little pearls. So let's check out what I experimented with this week. Hi everyone and welcome to Experimental Eats, where I'll be going through the science behind how food works. Today I made boba. 
This drink was created in Taiwan in the 1980s and has quickly gained popularity around the rest of the world. At its core, bubble tea consists of boba and tea, but many other people have added other fun ingredients in order to kind of spice up the tea. So now that we know a little bit about this drink, let's get into making it. For this recipe, there are four different components to it. There is the boba, the tea, the milk mixture, and the brown sugar syrup. I started off by making my tea by boiling water, adding a black tea bag, and letting it steep. Then I created my milk mixture by adding three tablespoons of half and half and three tablespoons of sweetened condensed milk to a bowl, and I mixed that together until it was combined. And then it was time to make the boba. To make the boba pearls, you need one third cup of water, one fourth cup of brown sugar, and three fourths cup tapioca flour. Tapioca is a gluten-free starch that is extracted from the cassava root, and it's often used as a thickening agent in different recipes. It has a neutral flavor and really strong gelling abilities, so it makes it very ideal for making boba. To start, I added the water and brown sugar to a pan and set it over a medium-high heat. I waited until the sugar dissolved and the mixture began to boil. Then I added a little bit of the tapioca flour and stirred it in, then added half of the remaining flour and stirred it until a sticky dough ball formed. It's important to add the flour into the mixture slowly so that the water will have time to kind of penetrate the flour clumps so that this will result in a much smoother final product. I turned off the heat and added the rest of the flour. Then I kneaded the dough until it was smooth and all of the flour was incorporated. Next, I split the dough in half and rolled it into long ropes that were about a fourth of an inch thick. Then I cut the ropes into one fourth inch thick pieces and then rolled the pieces into balls. I put the balls into more tapioca flour after rolling them in order to make sure that they wouldn't stick together. Then I brought a pot of water to a boil, shook off any excess flour, and added the pearls to the water. Then reduced the heat to medium low. I let the pearls simmer for about 20 minutes until they were fully cooked through. And in the meantime, I prepared my brown sugar syrup. I added one cup of brown sugar and one cup of water to a pan and set it to medium heat. I then waited until the sugar dissolved and the syrup had become thicker. Once the pearls were done cooking, I drained them and rinsed them with cold water to cool them off. At this point, they had changed texture. They were now kind of sticky and chewy and slimy, just as you would normally expect from a classic boba. When tapioca absorbs water, it retains this moisture in a gel, which is the reason that the boba has a really slimy texture. I then added the boba to the brown sugar syrup and let them sit for about 45 minutes so they could absorb the flavor of the syrup. Finally, I assembled my boba milk tea. I added the boba pearls and the brown sugar mixture, added ice, put in some of my black tea, and added some of the milk mixture. And then I finally got to try my tea. All right, so I have my finished boba. I have it in tea form and in regular boba form, so I'm gonna try each of them, and we'll see how this goes. Well, that's really good. I feel that it doesn't have quite as, it, it doesn't seem quite as dense and chewy as some of the boba that I've gotten from other stores. I forgot my boba straws. Like in the tea, the tea kind of strips away a little bit of that slimy texture, but it's still chewy, still good. So I'm gonna get back to my boba, but I will send it back to you in the studio. Thanks, Krista. I've actually tried making boba before, but I have no idea what I did last time because it did not turn out that well. So I'm glad it went better this time around. But you know, it honestly took so long to roll those pieces into balls. And I think that the strategy is to have like a boba making party so that everyone can help roll them and then everyone can take some home afterwards. It's gonna happen. <laughs> well, anyways, don't go away quite yet because after the break, Hattie and I will be making a festive treat during college cooking. Stick around. I am what hunger looks like in America. I am an eight-year-old girl who's not excited for the last day of school. Because this may be the last time I'll have lunch. Till September. I am a single father of two who works three part-time jobs. And that's still not enough to put food on the table. I am a 16-year-old boy who just got my first job to help feed my little sisters. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. People you pass by every day but never knew they were hungry. Feeding 
America, 200 food banks strong. We finally made it to our last and my personal favorite part of the show, college cooking. After scouring the internet this month, I came across a recipe that we just couldn't pass up on making. This recipe is a fun Easter twist on Rice Krispie treats. It involves Rice Krispie cereal, butter, and of course, peeps. I'm just too excited, <laughs> so let's get started. Um, the first step is we've got all these peeps right here. We started melting them, um, and you, you just want to throw some butter and some peeps into a pan, and you want to start getting them melted. You kind of boil it a little bit so that you can get them nice and gooey. Um, we're going to add some more peeps because the more the merrier. The more the merrier, <laughs> you know? We can't have too many peeps. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about the fact that they are called chicks because I feel like that's just sad. But you know, that's also probably just me. So, <laughs> no, no, no. I love it. So there was Here's the thing. Do you have a preference on the chick peeps or the bunny peeps? Honestly, I have to I have to go with the chick peeps just because well, first of all, bunnies don't say peep chicks do and second of all i mean it's i'm just more accustomed to the chick peep so like they have my heart you know oh yeah definitely and yeah. a place in my stomach but oh yeah <laughs> so we can see that they're starting to kind of melt through we've got a couple more um marshmallow chunks in there but they're they're gonna melt pretty quickly and honestly with Rice Krispie treats, you can't really do them wrong. It's Rice Krispies and marshmallows. Yeah. Like, I'm fine if they're a little chunky. The more oh marshmallows in there, you know, I will great. not complain. All right. So now that we have this melted, um, what is the next step we're going to do? All right. So now we just add Rice Krispies. And awesome. it's really easy. You don't have to measure them. You literally just pour until it looks about right. <laughs> <laughs> you can always add more peeps, more oh, yeah. butter, more... Rice cereal, if you oh, want. Oh, yeah, definitely. Looks like it needs some more. All right. I think Yeah, the... you just really want to get it all mixed up in there. Well, oh. there we go. <laughs> oh, there we They're go. just going to be very crispy. That all looks great right. to me. All right. Cool. So now that we've got that gonna done. going to keep smashing it down. No, it's perfect. <laughs> now we can just, oh, look, it's melting our spoon. <laughs> Now we could just go ahead and pour them onto our pan, and this is a greased up pan. I like to grease the pans just so that the Rice Krispies don't stick. Um, so the, the next thing that we're going to do, so as Hattie is getting this spread out, they are very cute, but the thing is, is they are not going to be very cute for much longer. Because the next thing we're going to do is stick these little peep guys on top of our Rice Krispies. Oh, yeah. um, and then we're just going to torch them a little bit to get them nice and melty. So, Honestly, I don't know who trusted good. me with this, but are we ready? I'm ready. Oh, and as you it's can see, sad. it's just kind of like roasting a marshmallow. It's great. Yeah. All right, so... Normally, you'd have time to <laughs> go through all of these, but we're running out of time, so we're going to move on to our finished product. They're going to end up looking like this, and they're super good. Yeah. But, yeah. No, I honestly, I accidentally snuck a little bit of them earlier, and they are so good. Um, I can't believe how good they are. Um, but speaking of not believing things, I can't believe we're done. This is the last show. So, Rams, I really hope you have a great night and a great rest of your week. What was showtime? 7.29. Oh, okay, cool. 7.29. Oh. Oh, I was off. 7.29.